Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Peter Seufeld, and I truly appreciate the invitation to speak to you. I regret that I couldn't be there to do it in person. It is a source of great pleasure for me to know that there is, once again, a conference of people involved in the Restricted Environmental Stimulation Technique, known for short as REST. It has been a long time since the last one, and I had wondered if there would ever be another. Although I know that your interest focuses on flotation rest, the original 1950s version was chamber rest, then called sensory deprivation. After trying different techniques, the most commonly used technique became having the subjects lie on a bed in a totally dark and soundproof room for up to 24 hours. Early reports of hallucinations, disorientation, and high anxiety turned out to be the result of procedural errors, not of stimulus reduction itself. When those errors were corrected, sensory deprivation was easily tolerated by most volunteers and the bizarre effects disappeared. In the 1960s, systematic research programs appeared exploring effects of basic psychological and psychophysiological processes. During the next decade, 1970s, attention also moved to the use of the technique in psychotherapy, health psychology, and behavioral medicine. By 1980, Rod Bory and I had coined the term rest to replace the inaccurate and somewhat scary term sensory deprivation. Researchers in many active laboratories had established that chamber rest has the following beneficial health effects. It is an unusually powerful tool in smoking cessation, even more so when paired with another effective treatment, and reduces relapse rates dramatically. It reduces alcohol intake in borderline alcoholics. It reduces phobic reactions. It is effective in weight reduction among overweight subjects. It reduces the symptoms of acute LSD and PCP psychosis, autism, schizophrenia, and disorientation in Alzheimer's patients. It reduces memory loss after electroconvulsive treatment. The 1970s were also the decade when flotation rest became prominent after John Lilly invented the tank in which dissolved Epsom salts allowed people to relax in shallow skin temperature water. You all know how the tank works, but you may not all be aware of its established uses. Rod Bory's talk will go into more detail, but here's a list of effects found anywhere from in one to a dozen or more studies. Reduced physiological signs of stress and tension, blood pressure, stress hormones, heart rate, and so on. Improvement in positive mood states. Reduced psychological tension, anxiety, and subjective stress. Increased spontaneous recall of pleasant autobiographical memories decrease in chronic tension headaches, decrease in chronic pain from various causes, including rheumatoid arthritis and premenstrual syndrome, decreased severity of obsessive compulsive symptoms, decreased muscle tension among cerebral palsy patients, increases in perceptual motor performance, in pilot training, and in athletic tasks such as basketball, ski racing, darts, rifle marksmanship, and tennis and enhancement of other treatment methods, including medical hypnosis and meditation. In the 1980s, research on health benefits proliferated, commercial tank facilities for public use spread around the world, and the field began to organize itself. The International Rest Investigator Society, IRIS, and the Flotation Tank Association, respectively the scientific and applied parts of the field, held conferences and issued publications. Most of this effort lost momentum in the 1990s. Why has REST not continued to be studied and applied ever more widely? Objective reviewers agreed that despite promising results, not enough rigorous research has been done. In addition, there is no overall theory to explain the wide variety of positive effects. This is a problem for scientists although not for pragmatic practitioners. I also think that, suffer, that rest has suffered from its treatment in the mass media and textbooks. First it was linked with torture and brainwashing, then with what were considered far out mystical conditions. Here, John Lilly's com combination of experiments with drugs and flotation 
and Paddy Chayefsky's film, Altered States, did the field a disservice. Last, as the melodramatic dramatic data were discredited by further research, textbook authors ignored progress in rest, and the new generation of students and professionals didn't learn about it. I hope that this conference will start a new decade of revival, which will move rest toward the appreciation and utilization that it deserves. The commercial and scientific arms of the rest community should make an effort to work together in finding and then applying new and solid facts to nourish the field. This meeting may impel new steps in both directions. I wish you high levels of stimulation, enjoyment, and productive interaction. Thank you.